Hello and welcome to our lesson on calculating percent change. Uh, percent change could be related to lots of different things. Sometimes we call it markup. Um, you know, for if you're a retailer and you buy something at a certain cost, but then you sell it at a higher cost, there's some markup. Well, it's really a percent change in the amount of the price. Um, we could also see it as a markdown in the same way. Um, it could be a percent change in really any value. Um, just contextually, you might be using different words to uh, signify that percent change. But a percent change is precisely that. It's a percentage an amount has either increased or decreased over a period of time. So by what percentage has an amount increased? or decreased over a period of time will be called the percent change for that amount. And when you calculate it, uh, you could be looking at a percent increase um, as a positive value. And if you calculate it as a negative value, then you're going to see your percent decrease. So a percent decrease will calculate as a negative value. That should make sense. And the formula, a, a formula, is always helpful, right, uh, can be used to calculate our percent change. So we have a fractional value here, and that's going to give us some decimal amount. And then you'll notice in the formula there's a, a 100 out here to multiply by. That multiply by 100 is just to take the decimal and convert it to a percent. And the, oops, I meant to put the eraser there. Uh, the fractional value is the important piece here. What do we put in our fraction in order to calculate our percent change? So what's going to happen in these scenarios is you're going to have some initial value. It's like some baseline, some starting uh, amount of something, some starting value of something, some starting price of something, and then on the top of the fraction, when you're going to take a newer value and subtract that initial value because what that's going to do is it's going to give you the change. What is the change in the values or the amounts? And then the bottom is, is the, the initial where we started with so that we can figure out what's the percentage that we changed. Okay, so let's look at some examples and I want a little uh, sports themed for these first few. Sorry if you're not really a sports fan. Um, but these are new and actual statistics that I looked up to try to make this somewhat relevant. All right, so first one says in 2018, the Diamondbacks won 93 games. And in 2019, the Diamondbacks won 85 games. I didn't want to pull up the 2020 data because their season was abbreviated due to COVID. So I, I tried to look at some full seasons. Um, so we're asked here to find the percent decrease in the number of games won by the Diamondbacks from the 2018 to 2019 seasons. So uh, the percent change, let's call percent change PC so that we don't have to write that out every time, uh, is going to be a fraction and in the fraction we want on the bottom the initial amount. So initially um, is going to be our like oldest or um, original value. And in this case the oldest or the original value is in 2018. That was the 93 games. Okay. On the top of the fractions we put the new value. We subtract out that initial value to figure out the difference. So we're going from 93 games to 85 games. And that's the difference. That's the actual change. So we want to take the 85 and subtract the 93 because it's the newer and then the initial here. And, and also we know this is going to be a percent decrease so it should make sense that we're taking a smaller number and subtracting a larger number. Okay. So they started out in 2018 with an initial 93 wins and then they went from that 93 down to 85 wins. So if we take that fractional amount and multiply it by 100, we will get our percent decrease. So 85 minus 93, all of that divided by 93, and then we're going to multiply by 100, and so we have a negative 8.6. So a negative 8.6, that's a let me change, this is approximately, I rounded that off. So you can say two things here. You could answer this two ways. You can say either um, you can say the percent uh, okay. there was a negative 8.6 percent change or you can say there was a or an 8.6% decrease. 
Okay. What you don't want to do is use the negative and the word decrease in the same sentence. So you don't want to say there's a negative 8.6% decrease because the negative and the word decrease would be like a double negative. So you can say there's a negative 8.6% change, which means there is an 8.6% decrease Okay, in the number of wins. So there's your Diamondbacks, not doing so hot from 2018 to 2019. <laughs> okay, although a few seasons before that, I looked up some numbers. Um, they actually went to most improved team by gaining in the most wins, but seasons ago, we want the current stuff, right? Okay. Um, I guess this one is a little older. So Steve Nash was a Phoenix Sun from 1996 to 1998, and then he moved to play with the Mavericks from 98 to 2004, and finally rejoined the Suns from 2004 to 2012. So Steve Nash moved around a little bit. Um, so in 2003, the Suns won 29 games. Only 29 games, that's really bad. <laughs> and then when Steve Nash made his return in 2004, they won 62 games. So he clearly had a positive impact on the team. What is the percent increase in the number of wins from 2003 to 2004? So all of this information, um, all of this information lead up is not really relevant to our situation. We are really just looking at 2003 to 2004 for the Phoenix Suns. So it says they started out with uh, 29 games in 2003. So for our percent change, uh, 23 is going to be, or sorry, 29 games is going to be sort of our baseline. That's the start. And then when he returned in 2004, they won 62 games. So 62 games minus the 29 they had won previously is going to show us the change in the amount. And if we divide by the 29, we get the percent change. So from 62 games or 29 games to 62 games, uh, we want to take the bigger number, subtract the smaller number this time because this is a percent increase. And then again, this is going to be multiplied by 100. And let's see. We have 62 minus 29, all divided by 29, multiplied by 100, and we end up with 113.8-ish. It's, again, approximate. 113.8, and that is a percent, which I meant to put up here, too. So, again, we could answer this two ways. We could say there was a 113.8% change or there was a 113.8% increase. And two positives don't cancel each other out, so either way is okay to keep both of those things in there. Okay, so 113.8% increase, that's good. 100, over 100% 100 doesn't normally seem like that's possible, but for a percent change it is, it means that in the following season, not only did they get all of the wins they had last time, but they got even more than that, so they exceeded what they had the year before, so that's good. Uh, good for the Suns, who actually didn't look too bad in this past season. Okay, so here's one for you to try if you're feeling okay with this so far. Uh, if not, let's see. In 2018, the Cardinals ranked 32nd in the NFL. So NFL's only got 36 teams, ranking 32nd. Bad. Um, so they ranked 32nd in the NFL for points scored, with a total of only 225 points scored. In 2019, with the arrival of a new coach and a quarterback, they scored a total of 361 points and improved their ranking to 16th. So that's pretty good. Uh, we want to find the percent increase in the points scored from 2018 to 2019. So our percent change, uh, we're looking at, let's see, they started out in 2018 scoring 225 points. And then they scored 361. So 361 minus that 225 is going to show us the change, and we're going to divide by the initial 225 to figure out that percent. This will be multiplied by 100, and we're going to be good to go. So 361, 225, 361 points from the 225 points divided by that starting 225 points, and then multiplied by 100 to make this a percent is 60 point, 
uh, four. Did I do it? Sorry. Uh, sixty point four. Again, an equal, approximate. At least sixty point four percent. Okay, so we have uh, two. Again, a couple ways we can say this. We can say there was a uh, sixty point four percent change, or we could say there was a sixty point four percent increase. Again, a double positive doesn't change anything, so just saying it's that it's a change or uh, an increase would be okay there. Okay, not so bad. Um, so again, a 60% increase is good. Um, so they got the 225 plus an extra 60%. That's, that's not bad. And they went from a 32nd ranking to a 16th. So again, good job, Cardinals. Oh, again, having a pretty good season this this year. Um, okay, let's look at some different wording now where we're going to be looking for uh, basically the same concept but in some other contexts because sports aren't everything, right? So Cynthia went to a dealership to trade in her paid-off 2006 Toyota Corolla for a new car. So she's got this paid-off car. She wants to take it in and, and get a new one. So the dealership gave her $3,000 for her car. And I guess she's going to use that, right, toward the new car. But then they turn around and sold it to another customer for 4500 By what percent did they mark up the price? So what is the percent change in the price? That's jacked, right? They give her 3000 for it, and then they turn around and sell it for 4500 That's what these dealerships do. Okay, so let's figure out the percent change here. It's, it's called a markup this time because it's dealing with the price, but it is the percent change in that... Um, amount of that vehicle, or the cost of the vehicle, or the price for the vehicle, whatever you want to call it. So initially, they bought the car from her. They gave her three thousand for it, so that's the initial amount. And then they sold it for forty-five hundred. So we want the change in the the amounts on the top. So forty-five hundred minus the three thousand. And then I put the bigger um, number first because we want a positive. We want what this price is going up. The cost is going up. And that fraction is going to be multiplied by 100 so that we can approximate this percent change. So we've got from marked up to 4,500 from they gave her 3,000. And that's all going to be divided by that initial 3,000. And then we're going to multiply by 100. And we get 50 percent. So a 50 percent markup, not so bad. And see, the one time I remember to put approximate, this was exact. Son of a... Okay, so we can say uh, there was a 50 percent markup. Okay, and the markup is basically um, saying the same thing as an increase. Uh, in the price. So the markup takes the place of the word increase. And a 50% markup, I don't know if that's horrible. It does seem kind of bad that they they made an extra $1,500 off of her. <laughs> they could have given her a little more for her car. Um, sometimes better to sell your car um, before you go into the dealership. So you sell it, you know, you put it in the, in the newspaper, you put it on a social media platform and sell it yourself instead of trying to take it to a dealership. Some people do it for convenience, but you, you're you never going to get as much from a dealership as you are from, from somebody else. Uh, okay, uh, Michael bought a pair of jeans on clearance at Kohl's. My favorite thing, clearance at Kohl's. Um, the original price of the jeans was thirty nine ninety nine, and the clearance price he paid was nine ninety eight. By what percent were the jeans marked down? So marked down this time is a percent decrease in the cost for the jeans. So our percent change here. So these jeans were originally thirty nine ninety nine. So that's the price we want to put on the bottom, and then we went uh, down to nine ninety eight. So nine ninety eight is going to go first minus the thirty nine ninety nine. And again, I want the smaller number to go first because this is a markdown. This is a percent decrease, so I want to end up with a negative. And now we're going to multiply by a hundred and see what we get. So 998 minus 39, 99, all of that divided by 39, 99, and then 
multiplied by 100, and we get a negative 75, not even 0 0.1, so let's just say this is about negative 75%. And so there was a 75% markdown. Okay, so again, markdown takes the word, or takes the place of the word decrease. So I don't want to say there was a negative 75% decrease, because then it's a double negative, which would technically imply a positive. We don't want those double negatives to cancel. So we could say that there was a negative 75% change um, in the price, uh, or a 75% markdown, which since that's the wording we're asked to figure out here, I would stick with that one, but you don't want to put the negative in there twice, okay? All right, one last one to try. Uh, it says, Donovan is selling candy bars to fundraise for his football teams. He buys the candy bars at Costco for 24 cents each, and he sells them for a dollar. By what percent is he marking up the price of those candy bars? Well, let's see. So the original cost for these candy bars is 24 cents, and he's selling them for a buck. So he's marking these things up. So we're going from the 24 cents to a dollar. And we want the dollar to be first because we want this um, bigger number to go first. We want this to be a positive amount. And we're going to multiply that fraction by 100, and that's going to give us our percent change. So we have a dollar minus the 24 cents we started at, and that gets divided by, again, the 24 cents they started at, multiply by 100, and we're looking at a huge markup, 316.7-ish. So this is about 316.7. So about a 316.7% markup. That's ginormous. Um, so think about 300% as, as a decimal, right, was about 3.167. Um, that's like three times the amount that it was before. <laughs> it's craziness. So we're going to say there was a 316.7% markup. Way to go, Donovan. It doesn't seem that bad because we're starting at a small amount, and then even with the markup, the total amount for the candy bar, um, you know, it's a buck. It's like people aren't sweating a dollar, but it's a huge markup. In reality, a fair price for the candy bar would probably be 50 cents. You're still more than doubling your money, but hey, Donna, if you can raise all that money for your football team, more power to you. <laughs> okay, not too bad of a lesson. Um, the only thing you're really going to have to be careful with is the top of the fraction. Um, you want to make sure the bigger number goes first if you want a positive value. Make sure the smaller number goes first if you want a negative value on the top of that fraction. Um, but if you forget which number goes first, or if you mixed them up, you're still going to end up with the same number. You just have to take into account the sign. So for example, let me just show you in this U try, okay? On this U try where we did 361 minus 225 over 225, if I had done this the other way, if I had done 225 minus 361 and then divided by 225, as long as I have the amount on the bottom of the fraction correct, I end up with a negative 60 there. Now the 60 point, or sorry, times 100, I still get the same actual value, right? There's still 60.4% there. If you put the numbers on the top incorrectly, um, you'll know because if you calculated a negative when you were supposed to get a positive, right, you'll know that you switch those numbers around. But notice that the 60.4 is the same. So if even if you mix up the numbers on the top of the fraction, it's not a big deal. Just make sure you're keeping the right sign when you go to answer the question, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've got some problems to practice, and that actually uh, wraps up the module, so hopefully you're getting ready for a quiz to finish up by the end of this week. All right, guys, if you have any questions, as always, reach out. I'm here to help. Take care.